Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a review of this book, Ever Expanding Horizons, The Dual Information Sources of Human Evolution, by Carl P. Swanson. And just to explain the cover, um, that's a guy's hands, this is paper on a table, and that's a guy's eye, nose, and mouth, and that's the top of his head. Um, so you might need to squint a bit at that to make it out, but that's what it's all about. So the book says in its preface that it's concerned with one question, namely, what is the DNA of cultural evolution? And it gives its answer halfway through the book on page 87 by saying, a sociogene is defined here as a mental concept, a structured image arising from one or more acts of experience, moulded into shape and integrated with other sociogenes by the action of the central nervous system and from which information is extractable, expressible and transmissible within the context of a social milieu. Sociogene is a term that the author included in an earlier 1973 book, so it predates the term meme. The book dates from 1983, so that's seven years after The Selfish Gene, two years after Lumsden and Wilson's Genes, Mind and Culture book, two years after Cavalli, Swarza and Felsman's book, Cultural Transmission and Evolution, and one year after The Extended Phenotype came out. The author says that their book is based on reading an article written by V. Potter in 1964 called Society and Science, and the author of this book quotes from that article, saying, The processes of natural selection and survival of ideas in cultural evolution are analogous to the natural selection and survival of DNA molecules in biological evolution, and the ideas are the key to understanding cultural evolution, just as DNA molecules are the key to understanding biological evolution. The author compares sociogene to the term meme and says that their meanings are quite similar. Today, the term sociogene, as the author uses it, would be described as being equivalent to an internalist conception of a meme. Sociogenes today might be called neuromemes by externalists. Today, on the internet, references to the term meme outnumber references to the term sociogene by about 180,000 to 1. Sociogene was longer, mostly quite a bit later, and it wasn't attached to the selfish gene, and as a result it has practically gone extinct. The term did have some advantages. Sociogene is pretty self-explanatory, while meme is not. The author contrasts sociogenes with biogenes, and this neatly and implicitly makes it clear that both are types of gene and the term sociogene allows terminology such as sociophenotype and socioallele to be used, while students of memetics can't easily adapt those two terms for the cultural realm quite so easily. And although I mostly approve of the idea of a sociogene, the term biogene, um, that's the whole idea that DNA is biological and culture isn't, whereas if you actually think about it properly, um, cultural is, is a biological phenomenon, so calling DNA genes biogenes is just a bad way of thinking about things. The book is mostly easy to read, fine and clear. It cites lots of literature, including the books that I mentioned earlier, except for the extended phenotype. The author seems to have a reasonable understanding of cultural evolution, though the book just looks at the issue of heredity, and so many of the more common topics of cultural evolution are left unaddressed. Some parts of the book suffer from the flaw of being a bit boring. For example, the book goes on about the history of the universe and the mechanics of DNA copying for many pages, while most readers will probably not be interested in such material. The book takes a kind of internalist stance. Its unit of cultural heredity is defined as being inside a brain. The author never confronts the main challenge facing enthusiasts of internalism, which is what to do with your conceptual framework once culture starts to be copied by machines. I guess computers were not considered to be so significant back in 1983. The author uses his own sociogenotype term pretty sloppily to refer to the culture of human individuals and of society. From a modern perspective, that looks as though he's using the term genotype to describe the heritable material of whole ecosystems, which seems to be a little confusing. Some parts of the book have dated. For instance, the author says, we know of no significant correlation between traits of known genetic origin and those of cultural derivation. These days that sounds a bit odd. Most people in the field could probably come up with some examples of such traits pretty quickly. So to summarise, this is a nice book, although it seems likely that only those looking at a historical perspective are likely to seek it out. So, enjoy.